All right, so today we're going to go over part two. We're going to go over the partner approach. Um, this is the telephone call you'll make to set up your appointment with the uh, realtors or financial planners that you got off of part one that we already talked about. Um, all right, so um, what's your starting point? You have the name of your referral source. You have the name of someone who they know. Remember we talked about in the last one, who do you know, who knows, who you want to know. Um, so we're making a, a warm introduction here. We're essentially creating a warm introduction on our own. Uh, we're getting a, a referral from someone, um, a, a friend of ours that we talked about in part one, we're getting a referral to a real estate agent and using that referral and the power behind that to, uh, to kind of open doors and to, and to bring down uh, resistance. All right, so what's the goal here? You want to get the appointment. You're not selling your company, you're not selling your business, you're not selling, uh, you're not trying to give any extra information, you just want to set the appointment. Do all of the, the, the education of the realtor on what a great system we have and how great a loan originator you are, do that at the appointment. Don't do it here, don't do it in the phone call, you'll just kill your phone call. Spend the time on, in, in the phone call just getting the next appointment, that's the goal. All right. And here's what you're trying to do. You're trying to be non-threatening. You're trying to be someone who they know, like, and trust because someone that they know, like, and trust know, like, knows, likes, and trusts you. You're kind of letting that trust um, rub off on you from the person that sent you over. Um, you're trying to be non-threatening. You're going to slip past their shields, their Klingon shields that go up as soon as they hear you're a mortgage lender, and you're going to disarm their resistance for all the things, all of their normal resistance items um, uh, are not going to work because of the way that we're going to structure this. Okay, so here I've used RS and RG. RS is referral source and RG is um, referral giver. All right, so I'm going to use uh, Mark and, and Tom. Um, hey, Mark, uh, this is Matt Lee calling. Hey, Tom Moslem gave me your name and telephone number and said I should give you a shout. Um, do you have a minute to talk? Okay, now I'm stopping with you. have a minute to talk. I want to get them to say yes. If, normally, if they're not in the middle of some appointment, they'll say, Oh, yeah, absolutely, because they're hoping that you are a uh, potential client, right? They're, they're not hoping that you're a mortgage lender. They're thinking you're a potential client when you make that first phone call. So they'll either say, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I've got some time, or they'll say, you know, I'm in something right now, and you say, oh, well, when should I call you back? Um, all right, I'll call you at 5. Or, you know, hey, I'll be done about 5. Oh, great, I'll call you at 5. All right, so do you have a minute to talk? They say yes. Then you go with, uh, you know, Tom and I were having a cup of coffee on Friday and talking about, and you can hear I fill in something personal. Tom and I were, were talking about... Uh, uh, Tom and I were having a cup of coffee, and you know, we were talking about um, our kids, and, and his son JT is in a, uh, the, the, the Little League book World Series for his division. Anyway, the subject turned to real estate, and, and I asked him who the best agent he knew was, and um, immediately you came to mind. You were the first person you mentioned. Okay, so really what I'm saying here is, um, I'm saying um, somebody you know, like, and trusts, knows, likes, and trusts me. And I didn't just pull his name out of him, or your name out of him. I didn't just pry your name loose. This is somebody that I actually know. I was having a cup of coffee with him. They can picture that. And then um, I was talking with him about something personal, something that not everybody would know, like his son JT going to the, the uh, Little League playoffs or something along those lines. Um, it's, it's disarming, and it's, again, you're trying to get the fact that, that the referral source knows the referral giver and trusts them that that trust should rub off on you because the referral giver must know you. All right. All right. And you say, hey, you know, I've been a friend of, in my case, it's his. I've been a friend of his for a long time, and uh, I'm a mortgage lender. Um, now, I figure sooner or later uh, he's going to introduce us to the same person. I thought maybe we would just have a cup of coffee, get to know each other. You know, um, Tom says you're good people and says I should know you. And uh, if I come out someplace close to your office, can we do that? Now, this exact language in this last sentence, you want to find something you're comfortable with. You might say, if I come someplace close to your office, could we do that? You say, um, um, hey, Tom says you're good people and that I should know you, and uh, I thought maybe I could buy a cup of coffee. When, when would work? All right, so let's go back to this and kind of talk through what we're doing here. What I'm saying is, let's do the translation, right? Let's do the subtitles on this. Hey, Mark, this is Matt Lee calling. Mark's going, okay. I say, Tom gave me your name and telephone number and said I should give you a call. And they're going, ooh, referral, I should listen to this. That's the, that's the dynamic that kicks it. 
then you say, Tom and I were having a cup of coffee on Friday and we were talking about something personal. I, I know, like, and trust Tom, and Tom knows, likes, and trusts me. We're friends. And Tom, your friend, says you're the best agent in town. Now go ahead and deny that. You, you can't deny that you're the best agent in town, obviously. It sounds a little bit like flattery, but it kind of it kind of works its way through the conversation. It's not too thick. It's it's something that Tom said. It's not something that I said. I'm not saying you're the best agent in town. Tom did. So go ahead and deny that because we both know Tom, and Tom's smart, and Tom's nice, and uh, Tom's a good guy. All right. I've been a friend of Tom's for a long time, and oh, by the way, now that I'm past your Klingon shields, I'm a mortgage lender. Now, I did not say at the very beginning, I did not say, hey, Mark, this is Matt Lee calling, and I'm Tom's friend, a mortgage lender. Because as soon as you say mortgage lender, everything else you say is just is just peanuts. It's Charlie Brown talk. It's wah, 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 wah. All they're thinking about is how they can say no. Now that you're past the, the Klingon shields, now that you're inside their defenses, you go ahead and say, I'm also a mortgage lender. Um, now I figure sooner or later, subtitles on sooner or later, everything in the planet happens sooner or later. You can't deny sooner or later. Sooner or later, she's going to refer us to the same person, or he's going to refer us to the same person. Because you're great, and by corollary, since he would also refer me, I'm also great. Right? I didn't say it, Tom said it. Right? And uh, I thought maybe, sorry for the misspelling, I thought maybe I could have a cup of coffee and we could get to know each other. Coffee, non threatening. I didn't say I could come over and have a sales call, I didn't say you would give me a bunch of business. It's just a cup of coffee. It's not a date, it's not, what's the old line? It's not a date, it's not a promise, it's just coffee. Right? So, now, the last sentence, this is something you want to become comfortable with. It's either, if I came someplace close to your office, could we do that? Or, uh, I'm going to be out your way next week. Is there a day that would work? Um, do you think we could do that and get to know each other a little better? Um, just two good people to get to know two good people, right? So, you've gotten past the defenses. You've, you've essentially had the referral source, uh, I'm sorry, had the referral giver endorse you you're telling the referral source about, you're telling the realtor, in this case, you're telling the realtor about the endorsement, but it's not you who's endorsing you, it's this other person that's endorsing you. And the reason that other person's endorsing you is because they like the realtor and they must, they must, um, uh, they must be smart and, and good and correct about that, so therefore they must be smart and good and correct about choosing you as their lender. Now, this, this stuff is so powerful with the way that the person's brain is wired in, you've broken the pattern, Right? The pattern is, hey, my name is Matt Lee, and I'm a mortgage lender, and I'm a friend of Jim's, and could we have a cup of coffee? No, Jim, you know, I've got, no, Matt, I've got somebody that I already work with. Right? The, the pattern you're trying to break here is ingrained. It's a trench that they're used to. It's like when you walk into the gap and you say, uh, or you walk into some store and you say, uh, the, the person says, uh, hi, can I help you? And you say, no, thanks, I'm just looking. And then sometimes you go, wait a minute, I, you can't help me. I, I'm here to buy something, right? But I just normally said, no thanks, I'm just looking. If instead, the person at the store had said, hey, have you been here before? You say, no, I haven't been here before. And they go, oh, fantastic, we've got a great program for first-time shoppers. If they say, yes, I've been here before. You say, oh, fantastic, we have a great program for repeat customers. Let me show you everything that's changed. Either way, you've now engaged with them and you've had a chance to kind of bring them into your process. This is the same idea. We're getting past the Klingon shields. We're, we're engaging them. We're breaking the pattern from what everybody else has done and we're just setting the appointment. Now, let's suppose they say, yes, great, you set the appointment. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's suppose they say no. What's the resistance? Hey, you know, Matt, I've got somebody I'm really comfortable with. Hey, you know, I understand you already have somebody working with. You're a great agent. Of course you do. Right. Go ahead and deny that you're a great agent. That's the subtitles, right? Of course you do. Um, you know what? Maybe five years from now we're working together. Maybe I'm working for you. Maybe you're working for me. Maybe two good people just know two good people. This is just a cup of coffee getting to know each other, maybe there's a match between us from a, a business standpoint and a personality standpoint, and maybe there's not. Just want to have a cup of coffee, right? Would that be okay? I almost always get a yes. I have had cups of coffee with people whose mortgage lender's name appears on their marriage certificate. They were literally married to their mortgage lender, or their mortgage lender was their son. I'm starting to get away from that because you got to pre-research it, but this is good enough that you'll get eight out of ten appointments. You'll get appointments from people who absolutely positively will not switch. You'll also get appointments from people who said they were happy with their lender and when they get into it they're really not. Right? So, um, hope this helps. Um, let, now let's talk about setting the appointment. Get on their calendar. Confirm a date. I find that if they say send me over some dates in an email, 
you're going to need to follow up, and the follow-up is going to be difficult. Much better if you say, hey, could you pull your calendar out right now? Or if you could say, hey, um, uh, I know I have like next Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning open. Pick a location, pick a space. Remember, you'd like to meet them at their office. You said cup of coffee. Tweak it now. When you get to this spot, you're saying, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to be down, uh, coincidentally, I'm going to be down by your office on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Why don't I pick up some coffee and bring it with us? I'll, I'll bring you up a cup. I'll call you from about 10 minutes before I'll call you from the Starbucks. Right? If they say no, you can meet them at the Starbucks. If they office out of their house, you can meet them at the Starbucks but, uh, or, or whatever the local coffee shop is. But ideally, you want to meet them at their office because then you get a chance to bump into other real estate agents. Right? All right. Offer them a couple of times to choose from. Um, Typically, if you, the psychology says that they're normally, if all things are equal, they're going to choose the second time you give them. So if you want to, uh, if you want to manage them into a particular time slot, give them two, and the one that you like better is the second. But give them two you like. Um, but offer them two to choose between from. Get a time, get a date, because if if it's sometime in the future, it will never happen, because you won't. Psychology says you won't follow up. You've got call reluctance. You won't follow up on this appointment. It's another way of them straight arming you, and it's a little bit more sophisticated for them to hold you off. So um, get them on their calendar, confirm the date, um, confirm the date that morning before, um, and then in the confirmation email, this is also really powerful stuff, make sure you reference the friend. I'm so glad Tom introduced us. I'll tell Tom we're going to meet on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. That way, they're not just let, if they don't show up, they're not just letting you down, they're letting Tom down. Make sense? All right. So. This, again, really powerful psychology, really powerful impact. I um, uh, hope this helps. All right, so what do you do last? Go on to the next one. Do another one. Success breeds success. If you make a phone call, this is why we got all of the names of all of the referral sources up front. If you can do five or six or seven calls right in a row and get four or five or six appointments, that's fun, right? Gets you jazzed, gets you hyped up. So make another call. If you have a good call, make another call because you're on. If you have a bad call, make another call because you don't ever want to stop with a bad one because it breeds call reluctance, right? Call from, pick a time slot, say you're going to make phone calls for an hour, call five or six or seven, call until the next two weeks are full and you can't put another realtor on it, right? You've got four or five appointments in the next five days. Make sure you get it because if you use this, you'll get the appointment. Make another call. All right. Hope this helps. Um, watch the next video stream. Thanks. Bye-bye.